So guys, this is the third video on organic chemistry. This one is about naming of organic compounds, also known as the nomenclature of organic compounds. Now, why do I name a name, naming system? Because the naming system has to provide things for me like the functional group or the class of the organic compound, the number of functional group atoms, the number of substituents, and where exactly where they are. So that a name like 2-methylpropan-1-ol tells me exactly what the compound is versus something like... Uh, uh, I'll give you an example. There's a molecule called lactic acid, which is also known as 2-hydroxypropanoic acid. But when I say 2-hydroxypropanoic acid, I knew exactly what the molecule would look like. But if I just say lactic acid, I have to remember that this is always going to be lactic acid. But reading something like 2-hydroxypropanoic acid tells me exactly all I need to know about the structure of the molecule, propanoic acid. And so I can tell you that it has an hydroxy group, has an acid group, has three carbons, and the position of the hydroxy group is on carbon number two. So the compound naming should have all of this stuff. It should have the class of the compound, like acid, hair, alcohol, or whatever else. All the functional groups in the compound that exist, not even just the main class, but also the additional ones. Like for example, in this case, the primary functional group is an acid, but it also has an alcohol. So this can behave both as an acid and an alcohol and the name tells me that hydroxypropanoic acid don't worry today we're discussing how does one name these kind of things so abhi this is just an introduction so the naming should have that the class of the compound the position of the functional groups and even the substituents like methyl hai chloro hai and other halogen and alkyl substitutes so how do we out I mean, what is the basic outline of a name of an organic molecule and there's a nice little graphic representation of what the name contains okay so if this is the whole name of the organic compound it has multiple parts to it it has a prefix a stem a stem suffix and a suffix now what are all these things let's start from the right end the suffix the end of the molecule tells, tells me the principal functional group like in the case i just told you about 2 hydroxypropanoic acid the principal functional group is propanoic acid so oic acid is that is the last part of the name just before that it tells me are the carbon carbon bonds single double or triple in in ein that's called a stem suffix because that's part of the stem so what is the stem stem represents the longest carbon carbon chain that includes the principal functional group also is the most complicated cyclic or non-cyclic chain sometimes it might not be the longest but will be the most complicated so that's what we call a parent carbon chain we'll see I'll actually uh, take you guys down ha alkanes, halogenoalkanes, alkenes, alcohols, and carbonyls, and acids ke naming convention. So we build up on the name. So at the end, you can name about anything. So the name consists of, like I said, the end of the more name is the suffix. That consists of the principal functional group. The stem has two parts to the name, the actual stem and the stem suffix. The stem tells me the number of carbon atoms in the chain. Like propanoic acid would be prop that tells me the number of carbon atoms is 3. The, the propan major in part here that tells me all the carbon carbon bonds are single. If it was double, it would be prop in. Okay. Now you can have a double bond and an alcohol group. And that would just be like, for example, a three carbon alkene and an alcohol group would be called prop in all. Alcohol kill all and in for the double bond. And in addition to all of this, the start of the name is called the prefix that contains one or more multiple substituents. You can have many, you can have three, four, five. What are these substituents? These generally are your uh, hydrogen, sorry, sorry, your alkyl groups, your chlorines, your bromines, your iodines. Those will make up the prefix. And if you have two functional groups, like an alcohol and an acid, like in the example I just showed you, then if the acid is the principal functional group, then all the other functional groups become prefixes now what makes one principle a functional group over the, over the other there is a hierarchy in order for example between an acid and an alcohol the acid was the more important functional group so it became the principal functional group while the alcohol became a prefix so this is what the names will have they will have a prefix to them 
like for example the name i showed you was two hydroxy hydroxy a uh, propanoic acid now what part and i'll show you more examples don't worry coming up more examples so the oic acid part was the suffix the functional group the and told me that all the carbon carbon bonds were single the prop told me that there were three carbon carbon bonds so three carbon carbon bonds all single and an acid group that is my parent chain carbon atoms how they bonded and a functional group and everything else which was the oh group became a substituent in this case part of the prefix and because the oh group as a prefix is called hydroxy not a, but if it's the only functional group we'll call it an alcohol and that part is a prefix part and then the position of the prefix also matters so two hydroxy prefix prop stem and propen stem suffix oic acid is your suffix so that's what the name consists of now the names i mean to make it sound this systematic actually helps you to think of this systematic way that's how i always come up with names i i i know i've got to have these four functions to the name the principal function group and then the number of carbon atoms and how they're bonded and then everything else comes in afterwards i always write my prefixes at the end or at least if you're writing them first you think about them at the end so let's go over all these four parts of the name systematically we'll start with stem stem suffix suffix and prefix so what's the stem the stem is the number of carbon atoms in the longest chain of the compound if it's a cyclic chain we add the word cyclo to it what that means is if i have only one carbon in my parent chain we call it meth two carbons are called eth three are called prop four is bute five is pent six is hex seven is hept and eight is oct so that means that if my carbon chain is five carbons long the name will start with pent okay and then the next part of the name will come in but then right now that's how so the first part is basically determine how many carbon chains carbon compounds do you have for example here uh, how many carbons in the main chain here when i look at my parent chain i've got five in a straight line this is there for my parent chain and this is how many one two three four five this will be a pent chain this also has five carbons but only four of them are in the longest chain and this one is branched you might say well why not this one in the long chain well if i count this one from this way and this way this is one chain that's three carbons long from here to here is four carbons long and this one is also four carbons long so effectively you can have this chain or this one either all considered to be a main chain the name of the molecule will be the same but it's let's say it's this one right here so this is four carbons long it will be a butte with this being considered as a substituent hence will be part of the prefix the stem will only consist of four carbons hence butte here i've got how many carbons in the straight chain three so it'll be a prop and these two will be considered to be branches the second part of the name now it will be concentrating on the type of carbon carbon bonds we have you got the single bonds which that area is called the stem suffix area so if the compound has all carbon carbon bonds are single then the next part of the name should have an and to it so five carbons with its all single bonds should have been pentane but if they have a single bond in but if you sorry a, a double bond then becomes an in now if your compound has two carbon carbon double bonds it will have to be called a diene di telling me two carbon carbon double bonds and triene tells me there are going to be three carbon carbon double bonds let's see some examples so here this is a two carbon alkane with a oh sorry two carbon 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 bonds are single so it's called ethane here's a three carbon so it's prop but one of the bonds is double so it's ene single double bond ene now coming up then we've got something like this now here i've got one two three four carbons so but and two double bonds so buta diene and here i've got also four carbons but and two double bonds butadiene but now both of these are not the same but they seem to have the same name so this is where the positioning of the double bonds also has to become part of the name otherwise the same name can be used for two different things and they're not the same here there's a sequence of double bonds single bond double bond here the sequence is double double and single so the left one by the way is then called but buta 1 3 diene why because the first and the third 
carbon carbon bond is double and here the first and the second are double you might think well why not count from this side well from this side it would become the first double bond would be the second bond but from this side the first double bond is the first bond so that wins so we start counting from this side give the lower number to the first double bond and then this has two double bonds so it's dying this one also has two double bonds but it's got the first and the third so this one is buta 1 3 diene and this is buta 1 2 diene that's how we will differentiate these two don't worry we'll be naming alkenes separately in detail so that you can see more examples of this i'll be right now just telling you the facts that the first part of the name is stem then stem suffix the mean stem meaning the number of carbon atoms stem suffix telling me the num the type of carbon carbon bonds how many of them are double and then the positioning of the double bonds now the one thing to note is that between the positions there's always going to be a uh, comma that means between two numbers there'll always be a comma and between a letter and a number there will be a dash so stem suffix and then stem suffix and between that there is the name number so for each item the numbering comes before that so the diene so numbering comes before that so buta the position of the double bond before that and then the double bond itself buta one three diene so now let's talk about how we can name functional groups that's the suffix part of the name so for example i'm going to show you four actually the first two are here, an alcohol and an aldehyde. So what makes an alcohol? A compound that has an OH group of atoms bonded directly to a carbon with a single bond. And that carbon has three other single bonds. That's called an alcohol. We're looking for the OH on a carbon with no other oxygen attached to it. And aldehyde is another functional group where you have another oxygen. But in this case, the oxygen and carbon make a double bond. With an alcohol, the carbon and oxygen made a single bond and this makes a double bond. So our job is to identify these groups of atoms. If you can find an OH on a molecule, that would be an alcohol. If you find a C double bond O called a carbonyl, carbon, directly bonded to an H, that H is very, very important. That becomes an aldehyde. The third functional group, which is very similar to an aldehyde, is a ketone. The difference between both of them is that in an aldehyde, the C double bond O has to have an H. While in a ketone, the C double bond O, ke dono taraf, it's got C's right here. You got a C here and a C here. So a C double bond O, a carbonyl carbon with an H is called an aldehyde. A carbonyl carbon with two C's is called a ketone. Again, this is carbon with a double bond oxygen. Carbon with a double bond oxygen. And this one is carbon with an OH group. Now, carbon with an OH group and a double bond oxygen, we've already seen before in O levels, and that was a carboxylic acid. A carboxylic acid is basically a carbon with a carbonyl carbon, a C double bond O, and the same carbon having an OH. So there are three carbonyl carbons here. All three are different functional groups. If the carbonyl carbon or C double bond O has an H to it, it's an aldehyde, and the name will end in al. We'll name all these functional groups individually later coming up. Then a ketone, which ends in own, is that functional group where the carbon has a double bond with O, and that carbon is bonded to two carbons, one on each side. A carboxylic acid, the way the name ends in oic acid, that's the stem part of the name. And that carboxylic acid group is C double bond O and OH also. Now I'm going to zoom out so that we can see all four functional groups I've been talking about. These are not the exhaustive list. We're missing out on esters. We'll talk about them later. I won't be naming them in this slide, on this uh, video. And then you've got the nitrogen containing uh, functional groups that we we'll do in second year chemistry. So the oxygen ones we do in first year. And the ones, the four functional groups we'll study are alcohols, aldehydes, ketones, and carboxylic acids. The What makes an alcohol functional group is an OH on a carbon, an aldehyde, a C double bond O and an H. So when this happens, a short way of writing uh, an aldehyde is CHO. And this is where you're going to find this carbonyl carbon on the terminal carbon atom because that's the only place you're going to find an aldehyde Q because it, one bond has to be with an H. So the only other bond left, this one, that connects to the rest of the molecule. So you're going to find, you're going to find this guy at the start or at the end of the molecule. Ketones will be that same kind of carbonyl found in the middle of the molecule. So alcohols end in alls, by the way, aldehydes end in alls, ketones end in own, and acids end in oic acids. Now I'm going to show you some examples of uh, 
these four functional groups so that we can understand how to name them as a full name. So here I'm showing you three of these compounds having three of the different functional groups this CHO is an aldehyde functional group and the compound has two carbons so it's eth the bonds are single and and it's a functional group is an aldehyde so it ends in al stem stem suffix and suffix stem is a number of carbon atoms are all bonds single in carbon carbon bonds and then the functional group moving on to this guy three carbon acid three carbon acid would be one, two, three, so it's prop. All the carbon carbon bonds are single and, and an acid, so oic acid. Here is a four carbon, one, two, three, four, but single single bonds and and zero one O in the middle, hence it's an ketone, so it's ends in an own. Now we don't have to number any of these. But alcohols and ketones, as you get larger, you'll have to even talk about the position. Like for example, here if the, this double bond O was here, it would actually be an aldehyde. So only here and here does it make it a ketone. Because you put it back here, it's towards the end. And this, if you put it here, it actually has to become a CHO. And then that'll become an aldehyde again. So for a ketone to be formed, it can only be here or here. But if it's here, it'll be on carbon number two. So it's butanone. If it's from this side, it'll be on carbon number two from this side. So this will be butanone either side. But let's look at a three carbon alcohol. Now the three carbon alcohols can be one of two different ways. Here on the left hand side, I've got three carbons, one, two and three. All the bonds are single, but the OH is on the second or the middle carbon. So it's prop, those three carbons and single single bonds, but the alcohol group all is on carbon number two, hence two all. Here, the alcohol group, this is also three carbons, so prop, all single single bonds and but the OH group is on carbon number three from the left hand side counting or from the right hand side is on the first carbon so it is given a position one all we look at more numbering in a bit but right now this is some of the examples I'll show you a ketone also now a five carbon ketone this is a five carbon ketone right here now one two three four five five carbon hence the name pent all the bonds are single and and this is the functional group now from the left it's on this carbon number two and from the right it's on carbon number one two three four so we take the left side and that's given a two own number now uh, it'll be a different molecule if this fellow was on right this this middle one right here so this is also five carbon compound so it's pent all bonds are single and but the own is on carbon number three so it's called pentan three own now we look at positions for alcohols and we name alcohols in a little more detail coming up and then the position for ketones also coming up when we name ketones too. But the understand the idea is that simply speaking that you have to count and number the carbon chain and generally the rule is and I'll talk about more rules later but the rules simply speak that you want to give the carbon at the end of the molecule where the functional group is closest to as carbon number one. So in this case this is given carbon number one, two, three four and five instead of one two three four five if i count from the left then this carbon gets position number four sorry if i count from the right it will gets position number four from the left it gets position number two the smaller position or the closer to the end is position number two hence this is penton two on here it didn't matter which side i counted from one two three also from this side one two three also from this side so it's pent and three on from either side so you really don't have a worry about which of the sides you start counting from now the only thing left we haven't discussed is that what if there was outside of the stem part the suff stem suffix of carbon carbon bonds and the functional groups what if the compounds had more substituents like other carbon atoms or halogens and all that so that's coming up next and those are called prefixes so what are prefixes they are basically carbon atoms, carbon groups called alkyl groups or halogen atoms that have substituted the carbon along the parent hydrocarbon chain. Now, what that means is that if I have my carbon chain, let's say of this nature right here, and if this X, the hydrogen here, was replaced by a, an extra C, that would be called a methyl group. If that had extra two Cs, that would be called an ethyl group. If it had three C's, then we'd have to talk about also which one of them is my parent chain. But if you end up having three C's, 
as a branch and that is not the part of the parent chain, then that will be called a propyl. You don't see, generally see propyls in the A-level exam. You will see, generally speaking, you will either see eth methyls or ethyls as your branches. Now, if they were to be chlorine atoms, you would call them chloro, bromine atoms, bromo, and OH atoms. Now, if the OH atoms are the only atoms of the molecule, then that would be the functional group. But if you have more important functional groups in order of preference like aldehydes, uh, ketones, or acids, then they will be the functional groups. And if those also have an OH, then the OH is treated like a prefix. And I'll go back to the earlier example I gave of uh, 2-hydroxypropanoic acid, which was something of this nature. You had C, 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 3-carbon acid, and the second carbon had an OH. So now, as part of the name, now if I'm making the whole molecule, yeah, okay. So now, what would the name be for this? It's the, let's talk about the main name first. It's 3-carbon acid, so prop, all bonds are single, in, and then you got the acid. So this, the whole stem and the stem suffix and the suffix would be propanoic acid. And then come the prefix. This is the substituents, and the only one here is the OH. Now, in, now OH here is not considered the functional group because it's the acid. So this OH would be, talked, would be called a hydroxy group. So this will be a hydroxy. And the position of this will matter. So if I look at this, this carbon is positioned to number one. This one is position number two and position number three. So the OH is on position number two. So therefore, this is called 2-hydroxy propanoic acid. Carbon number one, carbon number two. So it's the hydroxy group as a branch and on carbon number two. So hence, this name is 2-hydroxy propanoic acid. All right. So now... Let's look at some names, break them down as a summary, and then look at some individual functional groups for name. So I'm scrolling down to two molecules here. Okay, so this is the first of the two, two of the four examples I'm going to talk about first. Now let's look at this structure. Forget the name for a second. I want you to focus here. Now it's got, this has a pretty big name now, because it's got one carbon, two carbon, three carbons. So it's a prop, and it's got an aldehyde. So it'll be an aldehyde group. All the bonds are single. And this CL is your branch. So hence that's a substituent. So the aldehyde makes it an al. All the carbon-carbon bonds are single, so it makes an an. And then prop is the number of carbon atoms. And the three chloro, the substituent is the guy that we named last. So everything else is named. Now we look at the substituent, and since the functional group got the numbering, so this one is carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three. So chlorine is on carbon number three. Here you got three carbons, so prop, all single bonds, and, and it's an alcohol on carbon number two. So all on carbon number two. Two more examples. Um, let me zoom on for a second. Yeah. So now I look at this one. It's got carbon, one carbon, two carbon, three carbon, and now it's got CH3 twice. Now here, it would be easier if you were to just at least make the carbon chain. So you got carbon, a CH3, then a CHCl. So I'm not making the CLs. Uh, H's and I'll put the CL there then a CH with two CH3's like this which makes you realize that one of them is on the main chain so this is my main chain that's how many carbons four hence the stem is but all of them single in and the only ad addition I have is a methyl and a chloro now when I have two methyl and chloro I can count from this side so this side the first substituent is on carbon number two from this side, the first substituent on carbon number two. So I'm decide I can't decide now between which side to take. Then once I can't decide and I'm left with the last choice, then I look at alphabetical order. Chlorine starts with the C and meth starts with the M. So when I have to decide which one to start off with first, I'll give preference to the guy that comes early in the alphabetical order. Not the type, but the name. So methyl comes later, the M comes later than the C. So that's how we decided. And so in that case, this becomes carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three, carbon number four. And with that regard, this becomes two chloro and three methyl. That whole is your prefix, but it's a butane in the main chain. Butane, no functional group. Now when I come here, now here you got to find the longest unbroken chain, which is one, two, three, four. You can even take the top one if you like, like this one. Either one is the same. But now a few things, which means if you take that as the main chain, then your CH3 as your branch. So we'll talk about the branch later. Let's look at the main chain. You got one, two, three, four carbons. 
you have double bond and a functional group. The end to which the functional group exists to gets the numbering. So this becomes carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three, and carbon number four, which means the alcohol is on carbon number one. So it's an all on carbon number one, but there's an ene also, and that is on the second bond because you're counting from here. So this is the first carbon carbon double bond, and this is the second carbon carbon double bond. So it's a two ene with one, two, three, four carbons in the main chain, so but. So this one becomes but, two in, because from this side you count, and one all. And then the methyl add-on, or the prefix, or the substituent, is on carbon number three, so it's three methyl, butane, two all. Now obviously, if you didn't get these, it's okay. This is just some, some of the examples I'm gonna show you. Now, coming up next in the next video, I'm gonna be doing exactly a little more detailed uh, way in which you name organic compounds started from alkanes and haloalkanes and alkenes then alcohols and then we wrap up with that all right so that's the next video coming up thanks ciao bye bye